Tony, reduce your voice. <laughs> I need you to reduce your voice because you're coming for me. This is for the gal them, too tough. Waistline good and they know they look buff. Skin smooth but the handle you rough. Hard not to look but you can't touch. Drunk off an of ex but now the girl's sober. Call a friend so that they could come over. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl, Shaliwa and wow, wow. Guys, it's been a long time. It's been a minute since I sat down to film anything. Like when I say anything, I mean Instagram real, I mean YouTube video, fashion haul. It's been a minute. So I'm happy that I'm here. And maybe in a separate video, we can do an update catch up and just talk about what's going on. If you would like to see my reaction to Tony Tone's new book called I Wish I Knew This Earlier, keep on watching. I listened to the audiobook on Audible and it's a three hour book and some minutes. And I just wanted to share some of my takeaways and my thoughts. Most of the books I've listened to on Audible, the authors usually don't do that and it usually sounds off. But since it was her voice, it just felt like I was watching a video. So I really enjoyed it. When I tell you there was just so much wisdom, so many gems in this book. It's like this book brought me out of my creative block to just come record a video. So I'm here today looking cute for y'all. <laughs> And one thing I will say is this book is a book that you can always go back to. There are some things in the book that you might not relate to, some things that don't apply to you right now, but most likely in the future, they might. It's kind of like a relationship Bible. And I'm definitely gonna have to read it again and order the paperback copy. So I can just flip through, highlight, and you know, because this, this book got the gems, okay? It has all the gems. So I'm just gonna go over some things that I liked. I'm not gonna go over the entire book, obviously. I don't want this video to be too long. Intimacy tells you more about a relationship than intensity. Y'all, let me say that again because intimacy tells you more about a relationship than intensity. I felt that, I actually wrote, I felt that. She said, we mistake excitement, thrill, and passion for love. We prioritize butterflies and fireworks. In reality, what they are experiencing are unhealthy bonds generated by extreme highs and lows. Because people always mistake having butterflies, passion, all of that, associating those feelings with love. It's not necessarily a bad thing, but even if you don't feel the butterflies, that doesn't mean that you and the person you are with are not compatible. So that was my takeaway. Don't wait for the butterflies. It's not about intensity. It's not about how much you guys fight and then come back. And then that roller coaster of not being stable in the relationship, you know, so when you suddenly get some love, it's like intense versus a stable, constant, healthy relationship. Um, those two things are not the same thing and they shouldn't be mistaken for love. A better measure is intimacy. Are you friends first? Can you be vulnerable with this person? Do you feel safe and is there trust? These are questions you should ask yourself um, that she said we should ask ourselves about our partners, about our relationships. Do you feel the important things that you should feel in a partner? If you do, you're most likely where you're supposed to be. She also spoke about self-betrayal. That's so funny because I was actually talking about this a few days ago. Self-betrayal is doing things that is not true to self. Things that feels like you're cheating yourself and no one asks you to do that. Right, so it's different from someone emotionally manipulating you or emotionally abusing you or anything like that. This is something that you decide to do on your own. So that is um, self-betrayal. And she spoke about that, keeping quiet about things that bothered her. she That's something that she did, accepting what she wouldn't normally accept, uh, reducing herself to make or keep someone happy. So those are the things that she said are examples of self-betrayal. So I know We've all probably found ourselves in relationships or situations where we just take some things, but no one asks you to do that. That's just a compromise that you made for yourself. So that is called self-betrayal. I didn't know that was an actual term, but it's good to know that there's a name for it. So that is called self-betrayal. So that was pretty insightful. So she spoke about self-care and I took these points down. Just things to keep handy, just in case you need them. Keep company that makes you feel good and happy. Be mindful of the way you speak about yourself and of yourself to others. Practice accepting compliments. I think sometimes I, I can like deflect a compliment and just be like, girl, look who's talking to that. If you call me fine 
thank you i mean i'm not even gonna fight it clear boundaries with people in their lives so making those boundaries make sure that you are setting those boundaries with people in your life because boundaries are always needed um started holding people accountable started speaking more openly to people about their about her feelings so she started being more open about her feelings to people and not just hoarding everything inside if your relationship is your life and your life your relationship you're in for trouble a healthy relationship should complement your life not become it i'm gonna i'm gonna say that again because i don't think you guys i don't think it hit for you if your relationship is your life and your life your relationship you're in for trouble a healthy relationship should complement your life not become it okay sis i think it's so important when you get to a relationship to set clear boundaries of self versus us slash we right self don't lose yourself in your relationship yo i'm not the relationship expert tony is go read her book but just from my experiences um you have to maintain the sense of self your identity there is that identity that's going to come as being a girlfriend or being a boyfriend but it's important that you don't blur those lines so if it doesn't work out you're not spinning around like who's gonna who can i go to who can i go to to heal right now where are my girlfriends where are my friends so i can start healing from this relationship so definitely that quote powerful um, i really enjoyed the chapter on compromise versus settling and you know she spoke about how settling for a partner is not saying oh i usually prefer green eyes but i'm gonna go for her because she has blue eyes but she has an amazing amazing personality so it's okay that is not settling um it's not i usually go for six feet two guys but he's five nine and he's taller than me so i don't mind it's okay that is not set in her book and i agree with her you are not settling for someone just because of their physical features you're settling if you have values that are different from the person you decide to go with if you decide to just forego things that matter to you just to be with someone i'm talking about respect i'm talking about beliefs i'm talking about a number of things that you value that make up your belief system basically the core of who you are if you go with someone that's probably not in the same alignment with you you're not being true to self and you are settling now compromise is probably going for someone that doesn't have the features that you want or things like that things that you prefer i think that's what she said compromising is when you go for someone that doesn't have some of your preferences but anyway i digress don't let physical looks stop you from being with your husband i'm gonna just say that if this person has all the qualities to be a good partner don't let physical features stop you from being with the person i'm gonna just say that and then i also took down some notes um she said she was not a good listener there was a time where she was not a good listener y'all when i tell you i struggle with listening sometimes <laughs> like sometimes i'm just listening to respond or i'm just listening to say i'm listening not that i don't care but i tend to zone out like i find it really hard to just listen to one thing so these are the things that she said helped her become a better listener so i'm gonna list them out she said apply two seconds of silence before replying to others so let's say someone's like shall what da -da 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 before i respond i'm a pause I'm gonna, two seconds just deep what i want to say you know she said it helps us consider how we want to approach the next topic or the next stage how we want to phrase what we want to say so take that pause before you talk stop planning responses in your mind slow down your speaking as y'all can tell i'm a fast speaker if you listen to this entire video i talk really fast um so slow down your speaking um slow down your breathing monitor your breath so slow down your breathing take deeper breaths longer pauses relax your shoulder let me do that and unclench your jaw how do you how do you unclench your jaw so relax your shoulders and unclench your jaw. Okay. Um, volume control. When you respond to someone, don't just go for the high pitch. It immediately puts someone on guard. Like, ah, ah, Shaliwa wants to fight too. No, like be cognizant of your volume. Control your volume so you know that you're having a an adult conversation. You're talking, you're not fighting. So control your voice. Uncomfortable conversations need to happen for growth to take place. 
you need to have those uncomfortable conversations with your friends, with your family, with your spouses, your partners. It's something that just needs to happen. You can't skip it and get to the other side. These are the gems, some of the many gems that I took away from this book. As you guys can tell, it's an amazing book. I definitely recommend. Out of 10, I'm gonna give it a nine. And the only reason I'm giving it a nine is because it was too short, okay? <laughs> so in terms of the Audible book, it was three hours and something minutes. So I just wish it was longer. And outside of that, it was an amazing book. I appreciate how genuine she was, how real she was. And I'm telling you guys, I've read halfway through and I felt so triggered, I had to put the book down. I had to put the book down, do some chores, do some things around the house and pick it back up because I was like, Tony, reduce your voice. <laughs> I need you to reduce your voice because you're coming for me. <laughs> but guys, I definitely recommend this book. Let me know what you guys think if you've read it in the comment section, comment down below. I hope this video helped you understand or explain what the book was about and probably help you get the book. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up and subscribe. And yeah, I will see you guys in my next video. Hopefully soon. I'm not promising, but hopefully soon. Bye.